Hi, today we're moving on to the book of James, the first chapter, and we'll look at verses 19 through 27. And this chapter is titled, Hearing and Doing the Word. And as we examine this, we're going to look at making sure that we are not spiritually contaminated, but that we are staying holy and really truly being doers of the word, as James talks about in our scripture today. Let us hear the word of the Lord. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. If your anger does not produce God's righteousness, therefore rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness. And welcome with meekness the implanted word that has power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. For those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, be not hearers who forget, but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, to religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. May the Lord bless reading of his holy word today. Earlier in the book of James, it talked about the trials, the trials and tribulations that we as Christians will go through during our life. And it is we are maturing, we know that those are going to be essential for our growth. That those challenges are things that we're going to have to overcome. Because Satan wants to defeat us. And James encourages us to overcome those. And today, he goes on to speak about being unstained by the world. Of not having spiritual contamination. And we got to be careful to not become contaminated by the principles of the world. Too often we find ourselves conforming to the ways of the world. And James is encouraging us not to be conformers to the world, but to be transformers of the world. And he tells us to keep ourselves unstained by the attitudes of the world as well. You know as well as I do that we sometimes develop attitudes that are not as pure as they should be. And oftentimes those attitudes are shaped by those around us, by those in the world who may not be godly people. We also have to make sure that we get ourselves in a way that we are not stained by the habits of the world. We certainly can have some really good habits but there are some habits that we develop that are not so good because we see others are doing those things and we think it's okay for us to have that same habit, but it's really not. We truly need to walk with God all the time, to be doers of his word. Today, we, we need to examine ourselves and make sure that we are working with God, that we're working our way through word and prayer, that we read our Bibles daily. And as we do, God shows us how we should be living our life and how we should handle the concerns around us. God communicates to us through his word, through prayer, and through other avenues as well. He'll communicate to us through people, through sermons, Christian books, 
songs, some Christian movies, and other situations that we encounter in our life. We need to remember to always begin our day with thanksgiving, with prayer, and to tell God that we are listening, that we are listening to him. In Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, Jesus taught a large crowd and he said, listen or hearken to this. Jesus proclaimed, listen to this to that large crowd. We need to be attentive to the word of God. And as Jesus speaks and as God's word speaks to us, we need to pay attention to it. Jesus was constantly telling people to listen and not only to listen, but to do. We've got to move beyond listening and do it as well. And James reminds us of that in our text today as well. We're reminded to be quick to listen, slow to anger, and slow to speak. Too often we're just the opposite of that. We're quick to speak, we're quick to anger, and we're slow to listen. We need to truly listen and pay attention to what God is saying to us. Be swift to hear, James tells us, swift to hear. Swift to hear what the word of God is saying, swift to hear what others around us are saying that might help us in our faith journey. We should always be eager to listen to God's word. In whatever form it comes in, we should be eager to listen to God's word because it helps us, it encourages us, it inspires us. And indeed, we should have quiet and reverent attention to God's word. Our duty as Christians is to receive the word of God. How are we going to progress as Christians? if we don't receive his word, if we don't learn from his word, and if we don't apply it in our daily lives. And that's where we need to put the word in practice. Too often we hear, but we don't act. We need to do both. We need to hear and act upon the word of God. Two of us, too few of us, truly apply the word of God to our daily lives. We apply it randomly sometimes, or not at all. We really need to get into the practice of applying God's word in our lives all the time. Again, we're told to be doers of the word. We should be bringing sunshine to where there is little or none at all. Think about the old days and a little story of a, a woman who went into a store and she rode the elevator. And there was an elevator operator, as there were in those days. And, and as the woman went in, she smiled and she's jovial, she is friendly. She was effervescent, just flowing with God's love from her. And as she got into the elevator, she spoke to the elevator operator and said, you know, you don't get very much sunshine in here, do you? And he remarked, only when I get customers like you. It is our task to be like that customer, to bring sunshine into the lives of others, to bring encouragement, to bring hope to them. And James goes on to tell us that it is through God's word that our souls can be saved. As James progresses through our text today, he gives us an illustration. An illustration looking in a mirror. And when one looks in a the mirror, they, they see the reflection. And as soon as they walk away, they, they forget what they look like. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes that we'll look in a mirror and we'll see it for now, but then as we walk away, we don't. 
If we only hear the word of God and don't become doers of the word, we're just like that. The word of God is like a spiritual mirror to our soul. Think about that. So the word of God is like a spiritual mirror to our soul. This helps us to see what we need to change in our life, to see the depths of our soul as we look at the word of God. The mirror or the word shows us that we can and that we will become blessed as we follow God's word. And as James goes on in verses 26 to 27, he tells us pretty much how to apply these things in our lives. He gives us the example of bridling of the tongue. Sometimes we're careless with our tongues. Sometimes we let things come out that we regret. And, and I know sometimes I, I'm just as guilty as the next person in letting some of those words come out that I really shouldn't. But we need to be careful in conversation. We need to restrain ourselves, be slow to speak. We need to be disciplined. We need to curb our tongue. James uses the example of an untamed horse. Sometimes our tongue can be like that, just running wildly. And we've got to guard against that in our lives because when we let our tongues run wildly, we can bring a lot of harm to those around us. And we must be cautious with our tongue. We need to have compassion. James shows us in another application for the needy. For the widow, for the orphan, as he brings as a partial example for us of those that we need to have compassion for. And we need to live, thirdly, as he speaks, an unstained life. And that unstained life is made possible through the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us clean, that washes us white as snow, that makes us pure and holy. James challenges us today to truly, not only to be hearers, but to be doers of the word. I know that many of you indeed are doers of the word, that you go above and beyond what others might, but yet we need to keep doing that and not looking at what others are doing, but to do that which God has called us to. Hear his word and do it. Let us pray. Our Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to hear your word today. We pray that we indeed will be doers of your word. As we look around our world, we see so many difficulties. We pray for the situation in Afghanistan and we pray for the safety of our soldiers and of the Afghans who are trying to find freedom, to find hope. We pray, Lord, for those in New Orleans and in Louisiana who are facing the onslaught of a hurricane. We pray for those who are dealing with the wildfires and those difficulties. We pray, Lord, for the medical personnel and those first responders who are dealing with the increase of COVID as it relates to the Delta variant. We pray for those who have been stricken by that. And we pray for their health and their well being. We pray to, for each of us that we indeed would be doers of your word. Help us to care for all those around us. Help us to be more like you each day. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to share these moments with you today. And may God's blessings abide with you and meet, be with you until we meet again. Amen.